learning is just not possible. Carl Lashley, 1890 to 1958. American physiologist turned psychologist Carl Lashley was interested in what happens physically in the brain during the learning process. Pavlov and other behaviorists had suggested that conditioning causes chemical or electrical changes in the brain, and Lashley wanted to pinpoint exactly what these were. In particular, Lashley wanted to locate the memory trace, or engram, the specific place in the brain responsible for memory. Like many behaviorists, he used rats in mazes as the basis of a learning experiment. First, the rats learned to find their way through the maze to reach a food reward. Then, Lashley performed surgery on them to remove specific but different parts of the cerebral cortex from each one. After this, the rats were replaced in the maze to test their memory and learning abilities. No place for memory. What Lashley found was that no matter which part of the brain he removed, the rats' memory of the task remained. Their learning and retention of new tasks was impaired, but the amount of impairment depended on the extent, not the location, of the damage. He came to the conclusion that the memory trace is not localized in a particular place, but distributed evenly throughout the cerebral cortex. Each part of the brain is therefore equally important, or equipotential. Decades later, he said that his experiment had led him to sometimes feel that the necessary conclusion is that learning is just not possible. There is no great excess of cells which can be reserved as the seat of special memories. Carl Lashley In Context Approach, Neuropsychology Before 1861 French anatomist Paul Broca locates the area of the brain responsible for speech. 1880s Spanish pathologist and neuroscientist Santiago Ramón y Cajal develops the theory that the body's nervous system is made up of cells, which German anatomist Heinrich Kaldierhartz later calls neurons. After 1949 Donald Hebb describes the formation of cell assemblies and phase sequences in the process of associative learning. From 1980 modern brain imaging techniques such as CT, FMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging, and PET, positron emission tomography, scanning allow neuroscientists to map specific brain functions 